I'm Larry Karaszewski, uh, nominated tonight for uh, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, American Crime Story, with my partner, Scott Alexander. This is not your first story about someone you've done something on Ed Wood and also on Larry Flint as well. What attracted you to this story? Uh, this story, uh, it's funny because this is the first time Scott and I have ever written television. And we would have, uh, you know, basically we do movies. And we've never done, would have done this story as a movie because uh, as a two-hour package, it would have um, just been telling people what they already know. But what we thought was really interesting about the O.J. Simpson trial was all the offshoots of it, all the themes that we could, you know, we could discover inside the piece, whether it's, you know, uh, gender politics or class relations or, you know, the birth of the infotainment culture, you know, and, and you know, of course, the sort of the, uh, the, the you know, the black uh, problems with the LAPD. And so there was, there was just so much we could do with it that, that, that 10 hours felt like the proper medium for this story. Were you in Los Angeles during the whole trial and the Bronco chase? Yeah, absolutely. I remember exactly where I was we're at the Bronco chase. I think we all remember where we were during the Bronco chase. Um, we, were in a, uh, we were writing a script for Disney at the time, and uh, it was before cell phones, and it was before all those things, and, and as everyone was leaving the building, there was the janitor downstairs had a little black and white TV, and it was like O.J. Simpson's being chased, and so the entire building all circled around the uh, the janitor's closet and watched uh, watched the Bronco chase um, uh, in his closet. Do you remember the day that the verdict came out and just the feeling around the city? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, how did this opportunity come to you? Um, uh, one of the producers on the project, a guy named Brad Simpson, uh, was in a used bookstore and he saw Jeffrey Tubin's book and said, and this is sort of like little thing in Brad's head where he, you know, he was like, hmm, I should take a look at this. Maybe, you know, maybe it's time to revisit the O.J. Simpson trial. And, uh, and he went and read the book, and it's a terrific book. Uh, uh, you know, Jeffrey is also nominated tonight. This is a great thing about this particular award show is that it actually gives the, the person who wrote the book the award as well as the person who adapted them. Um, and, um, you know, the second we heard about it, it was one of those things we've been looking for a long time to figure out what would be the thing we do in television. And Scott and I are usually very deliberate about our decisions, about what kind of projects we take. And the second we were like, yes, get us in the room there. We, 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 we want to take on Tubin's book. So from that time that you met with the one gentleman and, and the used bookstore and all that, uh, how much time has passed since really until you got the show on the air? It was a very long time. We didn't treat it, uh, you know, like a, uh, traditional television. We really developed it and researched it. And so it was about three years uh, to got on the air, and now it's been a year since it's been on the air. So. Okay. Now, when you wrote, let's say... The, the beginning, I guess, episode, uh, did you have other people look at it for uh, a tone and making sure that whatever your own bias was or, or your partner's bias was not put on to the writing or in the writing? Um, I would say you know, we definitely had other people take a look at it, but the, uh, we have our own tone. So I actually don't think it was about us taking our take away from it. We were never uh, coming right out and saying whether he did or didn't do it, but there's so much evidence that to sort of point in that direction. We were just sort of presenting the case, and we have a very unusual sort of a satiric comedic tone that, but we, well, the, 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 the tricky thing in this thing was two innocent people died, so you didn't want to have, that. You, you never wanted that to be any kind of source of humor, but there's a certain absurdity that that, that was the O.J. Simpson trial, and having you know, the Kardashians be a part of it and things like that. So uh, we, we were always conscious of trying to keep our tone. Uh, and uh, you know, we had always had great advice and we had, you know, some co-writers with us all the time to, you know, sort of keep us honest. And it was, it was very important for us to tell the truth, but just to do it in a very entertaining way. I know all the legal team became their own celebrity from a Judge Ito included. Um, how much research did you uh, do and, and watch videos on, you know, Marsha Clark or whoever? And uh, we did an insane amount of uh, research. Uh, I mean, there was Jeffrey Tubin's book, but, but every single person involved in the trial wrote at least one book, maybe two books, sometimes three books. There's thousands and thousands of pages of court transcripts. There's hours of court t TV. So it was really just the most intense research project we ever had, it, you know, so, um, yeah, no, even, the, even the jurors wrote books. So when you write a screenplay, um, do you think that it's finished after two drafts? I mean, how critical are you of your own work or your partner's work? Well, we're very critical of our own work because by the time it gets to even say his first draft, that's probably like actually number 10 for us. We've gone through it so many times and, uh, you know, so we, uh, uh, 
we generally sometimes prefer the earlier drafts because they're they're the kind of the most pure. But uh, we've been in this business a long time, so we know we do whatever it takes to get it on the air. And uh, what book can you recommend to some of the viewers on screenwriting structure or, or just uh, adaptation? Anything I don't that know filmmaking? No, I don't really have. Um, you know the uh, you know the. I certainly, in the old days, I would look to something like Sid Field, uh, you know, but I have no idea whether that would actually, you know, uh, be someone in today's climate would do. I would recommend a book that we wrote, which is uh, our screenplay uh, for Man on the Moon, the uh, Jim Carrey movie about Andy Kaufman. Um, uh, We not only include the screenplay, but we include sort of a a very in-depth how things were changed for the screen, and I think it's one of the best... uh, you know, you, a young screenwriter can really look at that book and understand how a script changes from when you write it until it makes it on the screen. And lastly, uh, what film have impacted you in terms of like a true crime or something, you know, like an Errol Morris film, like uh, Thin Blue Line or different ones that are in the similar genre as what you've done? I mean, uh, as a young man, I saw, you know, the black and white version of In Cold Blood, Richard Burks' movie of that, and that definitely had a uh, gigantic effect on me. It, 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 it terrified me, you know, and so, and so that, that was the first thing that came to mind. Certainly David Fincher's Zodiac is an extraordinary film. That's an extraordinary film because uh, it's about not solving the crime, and it's about how unsettling that is, where the fact that, like, um, you know, no matter how horrific true crime stories tend to be, at the end there's some kind of closure, and Zodiac is about not getting that closure and what that does to a person, how it tears you apart. So I think it's a very interesting film. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.